of teachings of other men who will come and destroy you and destroy your moral code. God gave his children, the Israelites, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, a moral code that they should follow. But throughout slavery and indoctrination, different eras of our people being destroyed with mass propaganda, our people have become spoiled. Through what? What's your name? Tyrone. Tyrone, what's your name? Come here for a second, real quick, real quick. I got, I got one question, one question. Once you answer the question, keep it, you can keep it moving. Where were you in 1960? Where were you? I don't know how I was. Okay, what year were you born? 83. What was going on in the 80s to the black community? Do you know? We're being processed where? Okay, because I thought you were actually going to go into a process of the prison system. Because guess what? During the 80s, what was the epidemic of the, what do they call the 80s? They call it the crack era, right? So along with the drugs infiltrating our community, what was happening to those that were suspected to be uh, doing all the drug selling. What was happening to them? Our fathers, our uncles, our grandfathers. What was happening to them? Because they were being processed too. Matter of fact, I want prison houses. Isaiah 42. What you got? They were getting locked up, right? So that was the process. Now they're in the system. Now here in America, those same, what rights are actually taken away from our brothers once they go into the jail system? Everything. Everything. So watch this. We're reading the Bible to show the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that our history was already prophesied. So is it a true fact that a lot of our men and women have been processed in the penal system or the penitentiary, the jail system, prison system? Is that true? True. Did you know that that was prophesied in the Bible? Let's get that real quick. So you can hear what thus said the Lord about his people. Matter of fact, before you leave, which one are you on this sign? You got what I want? Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 22. Go ahead. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Uh -huh. They are all of them snared in holes. Uh -huh. And they are hid in prison houses. They are hid where? And they are hid in prison houses. Uh -huh. They are for a prey uh -huh. and none delivered. And none delivered. A lot of our people during the crack era, when they were given sentences, how long were those sentences? Huh? No, what I'm saying is, what was the jail sentence? That's what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Life. Get, read that last part again. What was that? And this is the, what the Bible says about their jail sentence. They were hid what? And they are hid in prison houses. Uh-huh. They are for a prey. They are for a prey. They are no longer in their position of power. They are the underling now. They're, they're being told when to wash, when to wake up, when to eat, when to, they are for a prey. Our oppressors, the same people who set up the penal system, the prison system, they are the predator. They chase us down, they hunt us in the streets right. and lock us up. Right. Right. That's what the Bible is saying. Read on. And none deliver. Uh, and none deliver. Why can't none deliver? They got a life sentence with no parole. Right. You understand that? Did you find yourself on this side? Did you? You didn't find yourself. Well, guess what? Maybe you're looking, maybe you're thinking through the lens of the white man. This is what the white man and all of our oppressors called us. Black American, West Indian black, Haitian, Puerto Rican. Which one are you? What do you call yourself here in America? 
Yes. What is your nationality? What's your race? You still fi well. Guess what, bro? If you're figuring it out, we're helping you with a sign. Right. You see that we're offering a solution, but what you're doing is you're saying, "Well, I got other stuff that's going to keep me away from learning who I am." The, the, those other things and those distractions are more important than me learning about me. Right. Did, did you hear what I just said? What I'm telling you is, you're saying it based off of whatever you feel. We're saying it based off what God said. No right. facts. God that created you, he knows who you are. Right. You understand? So watch this. Come over here. It's, right, it's plain and simple. Right. But you know what? Either you're afraid to learn who you are because you're going to be held accountable for whether you're living up to it. But guess what? Stop being afraid. Right. Learn who you are so that you can learn your purpose. Right. Otherwise, you're still a slave here in America. You either want to be this or you want to be a God on the face of the earth. Right. With, but, but watch where your feet, watch this. Where are your feet pointing? Bring it out. Where are your feet pointing? Bring it Is out. it pointed to knowledge and understanding or are you pointed towards destruction and distraction? Right. Tell me. T j hey, if you just be honest with me, I'll respect you more. But if you're going to beat around the bush yeah. and not, you right in the face of information. Right. But you don't want to learn about you. you. So how are you going to fix your problems? Right. Huh? Right. Right. No, God is right. That's right. But look at where you're facing. Get uh, Zechariah 7 and 11. Because we're seeing what we have been made into here in America. Our distractions come from our family members. Our distractions come from people who we call loved ones. Because he just as lost as you. Everybody in our community needs to learn who they are but nobody wants the solution. Right. So we see the problems, but we don't see the solution, even though it's right in front of our face. It's on your grandma table. It's at the church that's teaching you wrong. Right. At least the word of God is in there for you to make a decision on what it says, but you still want to listen to the distractions and the lies. Our people got to cut it out. What you got? Zechariah uh, 7 and 11, read. The book of Zechariah, chapter 7 and verse 11. Uh -huh. But they refuse to hark it. So the Bible says, what God says about his children, they will refuse to listen. Right. So it goes from just being disobedient to being blatantly disregarding. We see the obvious. We hear the obvious. We have an opinion about the obvious. But when God is calling to his children, God says you refuse to listen. Right. So you know what the solution is. Right. That's why your destruction is going to be greater. Right. My sister right here. My sister right here. What's your name? What's your name, sis? What's your name? Princess, come here for a second. Just one, two minutes, princess. Two minutes, princess. Watch this. And I like that shirt because I'm going to ask you a question. What is faith? Because you're wearing that shirt, it, that word obviously means something to you, right? Watch this. Come here for a second. I'm going to show you something. I want to show you something real quick. Faith. What is faith? It's believing, right? In what? In words. Get Hebrews 11 and 1 real quick. I'm going to show you something. Because guess what? As What's your nationality? Christianity. Christianity. Well, I was raised in Baptist, but I, as I got older, I became Christian. Now, when, and when we say nationality, okay? Nationality is what you put on a job application when they ask you about ethnicity or race. Right. So is Christianity a race? Uh, no. No. It's an ideology, a philosophy, right? right? right. But what right. we need you to understand is the faith that the Bible is built off of is dealing with a certain lineage of people. Come look at this sign. Look at this sign. It's real quick. I only need two minutes okay. to build your faith. You understand? Right. So on this sign, this is what God calls his people, his children. On this side is what his children were called after they were made slaves. So which one are you, according to the Bible? Uh, I have, do I got to meet So watch this. So what, what, what's the, your nationality, your race? What's your race? Um, I guess African American. African American. So you won't see African American in the Bible, will you? No. But you will see Judah in the Bible. You understand? So there's a disconnect between faith and logic. Right. You understand? Okay. So your faith is built off of an ideology where these people reign supreme. 
the Bible is based off of the faith that Christ is a black man as it is written. Right. And he is coming to deliver people who look like him, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right. from the conditions that we were made subject to for disobeying our Heavenly Father. Right. Do you understand that? So now our faith is we're waiting to be saved from this condition of hatred, blatant disregard, murder, pillaging of our people. Right. That's what the Bible is actually talking about. But right. guess what? In white Christianity, they don't teach that. They teach you God loves everybody. Right. That's what your faith is built off of in Christianity, right? right. Well, I mean, why? We can't love everybody? No, we didn't say, let's start here. Do you love yourself and do you love your people? Okay. Now, who do you need to work on first? Your, and you belong to a people, right? So amongst our people, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, are there enough problems to go around that we need to fix ourselves? Bring it out. Get out. Yes. Yes. So we're worrying about loving everybody else, but we forgot how to love ourselves. Right. So what faith are we exhibiting? I want First John 4 and 20. I'm going to show you what faith God is telling us to deal in. Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. First John 4 and 20, read. The book of First John chapter 4 and verse 20. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother. If a man says that he loves God, do you love God? Right? You love God. And then God comes right behind that. He says, if a man says he loves me, but then hates his brother, read. He is a liar. He is a what? He is a liar. Read on. For he that loveth not his brother, uh -huh. whom he seeth, whom he seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Get Leviticus 19 and 18. What does that look like? What does loving your brother actually look like? This is the faith that Jesus Christ is trying to show us. You understand that? So watch this. Leviticus 19, verse 17. Start at 17. Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Uh -huh. you know, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. You should not hate your brother in your heart. Because when you hate your brother in your heart, it leads to murders. It leads to single parent households because you'll sleep with your sister and you won't make her honorable in marriage. You will steal from your brother. You will sleep with your brother's wife. You will kill your brother. You will, you will deceive your brother in lies. Right. These are the things that God is trying to show us. If you love your brother, you won't show them hatred. Right. Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So the way that we show our brother's love, according to God, is to rebuke them, correct them. You should be able to see the evil that they have manifested, and you should be in place with the word of God to deal with that thing of rebuke them. For instance, exhibit A. Everybody look across the street. What are they celebrating? What are our people celebrating and getting ready to celebrate? What are they doing? Valentine's Day. What is this? What gods are we serving with Valentine's Day? Do you know? Do you know? Are you aware? Because I know that's commandment number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Right? The god that is being worshipped on Valentine's Day is a god called Lupercalia. A God of orgies and sexual immorality. Bring it out. But guess what? When we celebrate those gods, do we not see that those evil deeds manifested in our communities? You know. Single parent households, latchkey children, inordinate affection, homosexuality, high uh, AIDS and HIV rates. Hey. We see the manifestation of serving other gods. Hey. But we got to rebuke our people to show them that we actually love them, thus saith the Lord. Hey. But watch this. Read on. And not suffer sin upon him. We should not want our people to be caught in the midst of their sin when Christ returns. Right. That's why we're out here on the streets teaching our people, right. building their faith. Because guess what? 
Our faith is in Valentine's Day. Our help. faith is in Christmas, Thanksgiving, yeah. Halloween. All the man-made pagan holidays that we can obviously see on Google. Bring it out. Our faith is in those things in opposite of God. Get Colossians 2 and 8. Let me show y'all a scripture on how to guard your spirit, how to protect your faith so that your faith is according to the Bible and not according to white supremacy. Do you understand that? Because in white supremacy, guess what they did? They made you a slave. Where they taught you Valentine's Day. Where they sold you on Christmas. Where they killed your Native American brothers and Hispanic brothers for Thanksgiving. Hey. Where they were killing your people for Halloween. Hey. On St. Patrick's Day, they're killing your people. Hey. And making a festive day over it. Memorial Day for killing off our Native American brothers here in America under Andrew Jackson. What are we talking about? We're not doing according to God. Read on the book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Beware. God is giving his children a warning. When you give a warning, you're obviously seeing the dangers that come about. We see the problems, but the solution was already written in the warning. Read on. Beware, lest any man spoil you. Spoil. Spoil. Beware, lest a man spoil you. I'm going to ask you a question. My brother right here, you look like you work hard. All right, you, you provide groceries for your household. Now, in your household, do you have milk? You got milk in your household? No, no milk. But if you had milk, would you drink it spoiled? Bring it up. Huh? Would you drink it spoiled? No. Oh. Read it again. Beware, lest any man spoil you. God is saying, beware of teachings of other men who will come and destroy you and destroy your moral code. God gave his children, the Israelites, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, a moral code that they should follow. But throughout slavery and indoctrination, different eras of our people being destroyed with mass propaganda, our people have become spoiled. Through what? Through philosophy. Through what? And through philosophy. Philosophies. Christianity is a philosophy opposing what the Bible says. Right. Do you understand that? Because I know that's a hard thing. A lot of our people think that Christianity and the Bible are the same thing. They're not. Because right. the Bible teaches against wicked holidays like this. Right. The Bible teaches against Christmas. Right. Verbatim. Very specific instructions, directions on how to avoid it. Right. Read on. Through philosophy and vain deceit. Vain deceit is lies. So we're following the lies of other nations and we're taking the Lord, our Lord's name in vain. Right. We're following those customs and not following his instruction. Something is wrong with us. Right. We're not exhibiting true godly faith. Read on. After the traditions of men. Uh-oh, after the traditions of God? After the traditions of men. So Valentine's Day, Christmas, uh, uh, all these, uh, uh, what was just January? New Year's. These are man-made philosophies, vain deceits, traditions of men. As right. a matter of fact, the same people who took us into slavery, we're worshiping their gods. Right. Worshiping their gods on the higher levels, that spiritual wickedness at high places, they recognize that they still have us as slaves. Right. We understand that. The, the, get Deuteronomy 28, 48. I'm going to show you. The way that they continue to have us as slaves is in the mind. Do you right. understand that? Because watch this. What color is Jesus Christ? I'm going to ask you that question. Bring it out. Uh, well, as far as what I've seen in my dreams. In your dreams? Yeah, he didn't appear with a color. It was more of a shadow thing. And you want to know where you learned that? Bring you learned that here in America. Right. Because if you were really reading the Bible, the Bible describes Jesus Christ. Right. Did, before you give the next answer, I, did you hear what I just said? See, a lot of times we're so quick to give a rebuttal, we don't really take in the information. Right. Right. You said, in my dreams, my imagination, Bring my out. own vain deceit that I, hold on, hold on, sis, because we got to edify our people. The place that our enemies want to get us first is in the mind. Right. Do we understand that? Because when they made us into slaves, what was the first thing they made sure to take away from us? My sister, what was the first thing they made sure to take away from us in slavery? Our name. Right. So that you would have no connection back to who you are and your purpose. Right. So God said this would be one of the punishments that we will receive. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed 
But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.